It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, where it is our mission to try to bring you some news you can use. Today is no exception to that rule. Follow me on X at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We have a 24-hour stream available on our website at obnradio.com. With all that being established, let us jump right into today's episode. It is the eve of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship game between the FAMU Rattlers and the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. And I don't care who you are, where you're listening from, and how you try to measure this up, no one at the time of this recording is giving the Prairie View A&M University Panthers a snowball's chance in hell. And I say to each and every one, don't count your chickens before the eggs hatch. Yes, it is obvious that FAMU has the best record throughout the entire Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yes, FAMU has 13 players who has made all-conference status within the conference. Yes, FAMU has the coach of the year. Yes, FAMU has the offensive and defensive players of the year. Yes, FAMU beat Prairie View on October 28th, 45 to 7. But that, my friend, is not what is scheduled for December 2nd, 2 p.m. Central Time. The odds are obviously heavily favored in FAMU's area, but there are so many hidden factors that are going to absolutely make an impact on this game from Tallahassee, Florida. And we're going to try our very best to look at this thing in the most logical angle that is possible. I know, as we keep mentioning, no one is expecting this game to be competitive at all. That's mistake number one. I will be willing to to guarantee you that Prairie View will make a much better representation than that October 28th display. It will not be what you witness on that day. Prairie View will be locked, loaded, and ready to roll. Now, I don't normally look at the Las Vegas betting lines, and and I'm not a gambler by a long stretch of the imagination. The most I've ever wagered off was a Pepsi, and that will always be my limits. I I come too hard by my money. But when you go at the quote-unquote experts of these betting odds, they have, at the time of this broadcast, fam you at 17 and a half point favorites, which is indicating that FAMU will beat Prairie View by at least 18 points in their mindset. And if I were a gambling man, and I'm not recommending, let me say this disclaimer, please don't take my advice, but if I were a gambling man, I would be willing to lay on the line that Prairie View will cover that spread. But even more intriguing, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that Prairie View will beat them straight up. And here's why. There are so many factors going against Prairie View that really they have absolutely nothing to lose. You can come in relaxed. You can come in ready to work things to your advantage. And there are so many, as we keep saying, snowballing factors that Prairie View don't even need to be on the same field with Fam. You Prairie View backed into the championship. Well, uh, a lot of teams would love to be in that backed-in position, but guess what? You're not there. Prairie View is. And if they backed in, let them keep on backing in. And if they have to back out, then they'll back out and we'll restrike 
and go back to the dry, drawing board. But the way this is set up right now, it is the perfect storm for Prairie View to shock the Southwestern Athletic Conference and the HBCU world. And yes, I mean that. I pretty much try to stay straight and narrow, just present the facts, be logical. And I'm still doing that. But there's a bit of the fan in me raising up today. There's a lot of the logic in me raising up today. And then there is just weighing out the factors. We know that the FAMU Rattlers have the dark cloud defense. They will be lock loaded, ready to go. But let's not underestimate the impact of the Panthers defense. They're not a bunch of slouches. They will execute. And I'm looking for nothing but thunder and lightning, literally, coming from Mr. Deshaun Jackson, linebacker for the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. I felt like should at least been part of the uh, uh, second team all-conference selection, but I can see him amped up, motivated, ready to make a statement. I can see the defensive line for the Panthers ready to make a statement. Yes, the dark cloud, they're the dark cloud. We're not taking anything away from them. But it is to the point of almost being disrespectful on how they're overlooking the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. Am, am I speaking from emotion? Maybe about 10%. But I am so sincere and honestly feeling that this is going to be a game that people are going to say, I never saw this coming. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it is is going to be uh, one of those excuses if this, that, and the other. And here's one of the number, number one reasons and excuses if this perfect storm unfolds. Literally speaking, literally speaking, the weather is supposed to be heavy thunderstorms. That is going to change the entire dynamics of the game. Going logically speaking, fam, you coming into this game would have an advantage in the pass attack. Strong receiving core. But with the rain projected to be where it is, it is going to be the neutralizer that Prairie View would need. Defensive backs for the Panthers, yes, there are some question marks and some concerns. But they are not, as I mentioned, a bunch of slouches. You can neutralize it with controlling that run game and yes fam you has improved in their run game but it's not on the level and yes i'm about to see it it's not on the level that the run attack that prairie view has proven to have throughout the entire season and that is going to be part of that balance that the panthers would need now of course the panthers are going to have to protect the ball just as fam you but the Panthers must protect the ball and the Panthers must keep composure. What am I saying when I say keep composure? No personal penalties. No after the snap penalties of not being able to control your emotion. Don't get so amped up that you're playing out of control. There are going to be things said that if you thought was worse before, they'll come from the depths that you never would have recognized. And there's going to be some severe smack talking. But don't let that get into your psyche that it throws you off your game. Stay true to your blocks. Follow through with your assignments offensively and defensively. And Prairie View is going to shake the very foundation of the HBCU sports world. I hope you're hearing me. I hope you understand it. And, and, and if you listen to this show on a daily basis, I don't get like this on a regular. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't do that because uh, I, I love sports. Sports has been a very impactful thing for me personally and uh, uh, socially and a whole lot of other things. But when it comes down to a championship game, and the greatest advantage that Prairie View has, believe it or not, coming into this game 
The fact that they lost 45 to 7 back on October 28th. Why am I saying that? They've had time to watch that film. They've had time to dissect it. They've heard, had time to hear the, uh, the, 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 the people ridicule them throughout the entire landscape of the HBCU circuit. They've heard the, the, the comments from videos and podcasts and memes and social media on that they don't stand a chance. And if you've never, ever been in a spirit of competition on any level, but in particular that on a Division I level of a championship game, all of that will be added as fuel for the Panthers to go out here and shake some things up. Now, I've been talking that I believe the running attack and the rushing attack, Antoine is supposed to be back in good health. You had Caleb Johnson uh, doing and coming to his own. We know Trazon Connolly has the capability of doing things with his legs. But there is one Scud missile that is going to be the absolute game changer for the Panthers. And that is Mr. Spriller, wide receiver. I'm calling it right now. On a play action, this brother is going to be able to make the connect that's going to be the game changer because there's going to be so much emphasis put on the run from both sides due to the weather supposed to being as bad as it's going to be. But the play action is going to be the one play that break this whole thing wide open. And I am on record for saying that I believe that the Prairie View A&M University Panthers will have a walk-off field goal. Now, it might not be at the very last second, but maybe the last couple of times they get a chance to touch the ball, they're going to connect with a field goal to seal the victory for the Panthers to become the 2023 Southwestern Athletic Conference champions. I'm not taking anything away from FAMU. I'm not disrespecting FAMU. I'm not casting any shade on FAMU. But FAMU, if we're going to look at it, has more pressure coming into this game than Prairie View will ever have. Yes, they're both playing for the championship, but FAMU has been the team that has been oh so close oh so many times. And so will this be another just missed it or wait to the next year moment? It came starting from the MEAC when they transitioned over to the Southwestern Athletic Conference and they couldn't get past Jackson State. And everybody was saying, well, because of Jackson State and Deion Sanders, they couldn't get over the hump. And let me let throw this little side note in. And I had Coach Simmons on the show uh, to verify it. So if you guys want to fact check it or do whatever, uh, when when Jackson State had FAMU's number for those couple of seasons, it was echoed that maybe we need to get away from division setups and just let the best two teams play for the championship. And my response uh, to, to Coach Simmons then was, man, well, you, you just got to win the game you're supposed to win and you'll get there. Okay, and all that will take care of itself. And now this year, Jackson State are echoing the same things that we need to get rid of divisions and blah, 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 blah. I really don't want to hear that because for many moons, the West had the best competition and Alcorn was running through the East like a buzzsaw. And you had people from the West, Southern, Grambling, Prairie View, battling each other out rotating who's going to get a chance to try to knock off all coin. And it's just the way things flow from time to time. Let's not use that as an excuse. I'm not using that as an excuse. If fam, you blow the hinges off a prayer, you said, I'm not using that as an excuse. You work with the system that you have and you figure it out and try to make the necessary adjustments. But fam, you Jackson state, and whomever else would want to echo, we need to change the structure of the, the conference. No, we don't need to change it. 
We just need to improve it and embrace those opportunities. And that's what made college football college football. It all comes down to that Saturday kickoff in most cases, sometimes Thursdays. But for the most case, Saturday kickoffs is what's going to determine you. And what I love about college sports and college football in particular, you got one time to you know take advantage of that opportunity. If you can't take advantage of that opportunity after that, it's your own fault. Don't start saying we need this, that, and the other. I go back to in Prairie View, if the truth be told, should have been their third consecutive championship appearance. But they couldn't get past Mississippi Valley. That year, Southern gets in there. When it was Southern back then, it didn't matter, but they got there. Now, they, they failed to Jackson State, just like everybody else. But that, that's just the way it falls. So we have to take advantage of the opportunities that were there. Now, see, I had some other news that I was going to get into, but I didn't think I was going to get this uh, deep into this championship game. But it is what it is. But I will make a notable mention, and I'll close out with my final thoughts on a uh, SWAC championship game. Uh, it has been uh, announced that Andrew Body will be hitting the portal after the championship weekend, which will be starting this coming up Monday. Then he's going to be- make himself available. Just throwing something out there in the atmosphere. Not necessarily sure. Don't have any insight. But just th- would it be possible? And would Prairie View be even remotely interested in kicking the tires of seeing if Brother Body would like to daunt that purple and gold. But we'll talk about that a little bit further down the road. There are so many other things that are going into motion right now as we speak when it comes to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. But we're going to let that take care of itself on Monday. Lord say the same when the creek don't rise. Just like we'll recap this weekend of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship game. Going back to the game, Prairie View has to make minimal mistakes and maximize on every given opportunity to shake up the foundation of the HBCU sports playing surface. And we'll be there to give you All of it. We're going to be simulcasting that game starting at 2 p.m. Central Time right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All you have to do is go to the website, obnradio.com. Click on the Listen Live link, and you'll be able to pick up that broadcast throughout its entirety. If you happen to be on the go, going in and out, you can lock this number in to listen to the game until you get situated and wherever you're going. 857 Seven 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 zero 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 zero. I'll give it to you one more time. Eight five seven 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 zero 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 zero. The SWAC championship game from Tallahassee, Florida. It's going to be live in full effect, and we can't wait to see how this thing will. In. We want to thank each and every one of you guys who have joined with us from day one, from the Labor Day Classic to where we are now. We brought you every game right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We thank our broadcast team. We thank our radio uh, simulcast partners for helping connect with us that we can provide this service to our beloved PV Nation and the community here within Waller County, Texas, and it will not change. We got basketball season coming up and a whole lot more, and we'll get a chance to get all that wrapped in and tied on a pretty little bow once this championship series has taken place. Don't forget, the Celebration Bowl will be December 16th, and the winner of this game will take on the Howard Bison, but we'll get all that in motion as we stated on Monday. But for right now, my time is far spent and I must exit stage left. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you guys so much for joining in with us. Don't forget, follow me on X at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And until the next time, you guys be blessed and we'll see you on the other side.